It's a good fight. Let's understand a little more about that. When he says, fight the good fight of faith, he surrounds that statement with several imperative verbs. What does that mean? It means that these verbs are demanding. It's setting forth some instructions that we're to follow and some actions that we're to take. And I only have time, but let's try to look at a couple of them. Look in 1 Timothy 6, 11. He says, but thou, O man of God, flee these things. What things? Well, if you were to back up, you would find that he's been talking about some things. He's been talking about pride and strife and division. He's been talking about the love of money and materialism. And he says, flee these things. You got to understand that running from evil temptation and running from evil situations is one of the most effective means of faith. Well, Pastor, what in the world are you talking about? Let me tell you something. If Daryl Carnegie were to get mad at me and put his dukes up, I'm not fitting to fight that, brother. I'm going to run. Look at him. He's like the size of a train. Paul says, run. Run, run, flee these things. Don't take that second look. Don't accept that friend request. Don't walk back in the kitchen where she's at to get the last word. Don't make that phone call. Don't get in your car and go over there. And deceive yourself that you're just going to talk to that old flame. Flee. Flee. Paul says, run. Friend, don't ever think you can flirt with sin. You better flee sin. Run. Flee. Amen. Don't listen. Don't watch. Run. Run. And it's more than just fleeing the actions of sin. We must flee the very desire of sin. Temptation to sin and the desire for sin are not identical. And many times, because people are walking around with a desire to sin, they think when someone says they're tempted or they, realize, or they try to say, well, all of us are tempted. No, 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 no. Oh, wait a minute. Temptation to sin and the desire to sin are not identical. Jesus was tempted to sin, but he did not have a desire to sin. The desire to sin is still sin. If thou shalt look upon a woman and lust after her, thou hast committed adultery already. The desire to sin is still sinning. We're not just to flee from the scene of the crime. We're to flee from the criminal heart. And Paul says flee. Flee these things. Run from these things. I'm out of time, but let me take a moment here, look at some of the things he says. He says, flee these things, but then he says, look with me in verse 11 again. He says, I'll have to come back. I'll come back next week and pick up here and we'll go further in our discussion. But let me bring us to an understanding right here today for some application so that the word of God can come to bear upon the places where you're in the battle. That be Okay. Now, look with me again in verse 11, because it's not just running from, see, we can run from the situation. We flee the situation by just leaving the room, per se. But we can't do that with our heart because it goes with us. So we can't run from our heart. So we run from the situation. 
Brothers, listen to me. I don't want to belabor this point, but we live in a time where it's hard. I mean, there's some women don't wear enough clothes to make the cotton ball on the top of an aspirin bottle. It's a shame. It's a shame that we, we have to walk around in a world. That's why I don't, go, I don't go to the beach. Are you kidding me? And look at naked women walking. Are you kidding me? That's all right. I'll just wait for the crystal sea. Do I ever go down there yet? Times I like going down. My wife loves the beach. I don't care a thing for it. I'd a whole lot rather go to the mountains. I mean, so we walk out here. Hey, it's the edge of the world. There's water. Hey, and now sharks. How about that? Let's go. Late in the evening when it's sunset and all that, it's nice. It can be nice. I'm not trying to condemn you. If you love the beach, then by all means, find a way to enjoy it. But if it means laying there gawking at naked, can I be uncouth, naked behinds, how are you going to reconcile that with fleeing? We can run from this situation, but we can't run from a desire. So he says, look what he says in verse 11. Flee these things, watch, and follow after some things. We flee the desire by pursuing some things. And he says, let's look at the first one. That's all I've got time for. Righteousness. This is not talking about positional righteousness. This is not talking about justification. It's not talking about, let me say it again, our positional righteousness. It's talking about conditional righteousness. Right thinking, right living. See, we have a position in Jesus Christ. I anchor my faith behind the veil. I anchor my faith in the blood. I anchor my faith in Christ crucified and nothing else. I put my faith in nothing but the lamb that was slain. I never move it from there. I never, ever, ever. I don't adjust it. Not one inch it stays there that's the anchor of your soul brother and sister you keep your faith in Jesus Christ and him crucified that makes us free free to receive all that we need I have a position of perfection I am justified in Jesus Christ I rest in that so that I can have no fear I'm in him but the fight of faith is a fight to be like him has nothing to do with our perfection. It has nothing to do with our position. You see, we're granted a position by unmerited favor. Amen. Grace through faith. Faith in Christ and what is done at the cross. So that if I blow it up today... So if I hadn't read the Bible in five days, so if I hadn't prayed, so if I haven't been beholden, so if I'm just blowing it all up and I'm mad at everybody, I'm the sorriest thing in the world to be around. I'm just, I'm, I'm a mess, but I have a position in Christ so that I may know that I can receive all things, all favor, all grace, all that I need. I am perfect in my standing. I rest in that. But I fight for transformation. And I fight for the renewal of the mind. How? By faith. It's a fight to believe. It's a fight to have faith. He names this about two or three over. We pursue it. See, the reason that we're to behold the glory of the Lord... The reason that we're to come to church. You know, Paul talks about materialism. You know, he says one of the problems why that person 
why someone is chasing after materialism, why they're running after money, why they're greedy to gain. You know why? He, he names it. He says, because they do not believe that God is gain. It's a belief issue. They do not believe that God is gain. And the one who believes that is free now not to pursue materialism, but to pursue God. Ladies and gentlemen, fight the good fight. Fight to believe that he's enough. Fight to believe he'll take care of your tomorrow. Fight to believe he'll meet your needs. Fight to believe he'll break your chains. Fight to believe. Pursue. That's the reason we come to church. That's the reason we serve. That's the reason we worship. That's the reason we do what we're doing. We're in pursuit. We're in pursuit. We're in pursuit. Not that we have to work to be saved. But we're pursuing conditional righteousness. The next word godliness means God-centeredness. I won't deal with it. But that's what it means. It's different than righteousness. It's God-centeredness. That all of our life is centered on God. Christ will never center you on anything else. The God-centered life is the overflow of the Christ-empowered life. Fight, brothers and sisters. Fight. The good fight. Of faith. Maybe tomorrow it'll be like being on that treadmill that I was on. Maybe you'll get there and begin to try to read the Bible or whatever. Again, it's not works, ladies and gentlemen. It's fight of faith. It's beholding the glory of the Lord. It's seeing in the word of God. Listen. 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 I want to make sure you don't miss this. We're not fighting to be justified. We're fighting in sanctification. And justification, he's fought for us. Now he's fighting in us and we fight with him. You see, the psalmist said he's our strong tower. You see, it's not just that we have a place to rest, but a place from which to do warfare. We're safe in the citadel of Christ that we may wage the good warfare. Without fear. Because our righteousness, positional it's all because of him and what he's done. If we lose the battle today, he doesn't throw us out. We, we, we don't come back to the camp. Now, I've never been in the military, so, so just give me grace if I get it wrong. We, we don't come back to the camp and hear him say, you're out of here. Forget you. No. Because of what he's done, he'll say something like, Hey, there's water over at the showers. Go get cleaned up. Go by the aid station. Get those wounds bandaged up. There's hot chow at the mess tent. Go by and get something to eat. And go by the armory. Get loaded up for tomorrow's battle. And then come over to my tent and let's sit down. Let's fellowship. I can rest in my security that I'm justified. I'm perfect before God even when I'm messing up terribly. And all I have to do is say, Father, forgive me. And we fight by faith to believe. To be changed from the glory of that we're seeing to the next glory that we're seeing. Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. Being changed into the same image from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. It's not by our might and our power. But by the Spirit of the Lord. But the Holy Spirit doesn't live for Christ for us. He empowers us to live Christ.